Many people take milk for granted because it's just milk. It's there. It's a staple food in many societies and people just don't think about it too much. However, as someone who for a very short time was a milkman, the more times I say milkman, the more I feel like a fully fledged superhero. As someone who was a milkman, I can say that there, there are questions that people have about milk, and usually they end up googling it, or just maybe never even asking the question. And that is who this video is for. Those people who are just mildly curious about that whole milk thing. Today we'll be focusing on homogenized versus pasteurized. What does it all mean? When you see that your milk has been homogenized, it's common for people to, over time, just wonder what that is. Homogenization comes from, oh yes, I'm going into the etymology of it, but homo meaning same, and then genos meaning kind, so same kind. The idea is to make the milk all the same kind. Milk, when left to itself, it separates into the watery substance at the bottom and then you've got the cream that rises to the top. That's how that phrase got started. So when you homogenize something, you've got your big fatty particles, the ones that float to the top, and your thin watery particles, the ones that sink to the bottom, and you try to make them the same kind. This process, as crazy as it sounds, is fairly simple and the easiest way to visualize this in your mind is kind of like imagining milk in its raw form, both the fatty particles and the non-fatty particles, the curds and whey, if you will, having all of this pushed through what is essentially a shower head. That's right, the milk in your cereal was pushed through a very fancy shower head so that when it was pushed through all of the big fat particles and the teeny tiny little not so fatty particles all came out the other side about the same size. Sometimes this process is repeated multiple times with multiple different areas that it can pass through so that you can go down from a big series of fat particles this size to slowly down, slowly down, slowly down until you have something that is homogenized to the point that it's it's never gonna separate again. And that's what we drink. Now, that leads us to pasteurized or pasteurization. What is that? Pasteurization is a process that removes or kills certain microbes within a product, usually liquid. This was originally developed for wine and beer, however, is commonly used in the dairy industry as well as a few other things nowadays that we're not gonna get into. First developed by Louis Pasteur, that's right, this one has no etymology of the name, it's just the guy named Pasteur did it, so we call it pasteurized. This French scientist realized that by heating a liquid and then cooling it, you can kill many microbes within whatever your source material is. And this process has gotten faster and better and even more viable as time goes on because now we can bring entire vats of liquid to very high temperatures and then cool it extremely quickly. The idea again behind this is to kill microbes or usually things that are going to either spoil the goods or potentially cause harm to the end consumer. However, a lot of the enzymes that help with digestion are sometimes lost, especially in the super pasteurization process, which is an even crazier version of pasteurization. Many people will argue about whether pasteurization is good or bad, but it really all boils down to a public food safety issue. Of course, you can drink milk that has not had this process done to it, and for most times it's gonna be okay. However, if you're taking a food product and shipping it across the country, and you need to store it for long periods of time, probably a good idea to make sure that it's not gonna separate, and it's not gonna kill you. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If it has, let us know in the comments section down below. Um, yeah, hit that like button and 
Maybe if you like this one, we'll do more. Um, hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified about videos like this one in the future. And there's some kind of bell thingy next to the subscribe button if you want your cell phone or desktop to just let you know, hey, I uploaded a video. And to my regular subscribers, sorry about the weird content. Maybe I'll keep doing this. I don't know. I'll be listening to your feedback as well. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all those things that make me love my job. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. Bye.